Hey everybody, we're doing something a little different. We're painting some MDF terrain today, and we ran into a little bit of technical difficulty during our recording, so this is a complete speed up today. We're going to start off with our traditional purple workup. We're going to be using the MC Violet, Sunset Purple, Emperor's Children, and we're also going to be using Misfits Green here. We're going to be running these three, or four colors I should say, through an airbrush, and you're going to see me start here by coloring the top half of the sides in VMC Violet, as well as the top of the building here. This is a building from Death Ray Designs. It's a modular component, and we're giving you an example of some masking techniques. We're doing a little bit of accentuation on the top and a cross pattern before continuing on to Scale 75 Sunset Purple here. We're going to be doing the top one-third-ish of the sides in Sunset Purple and focusing down that cross pattern along the top. This is more of a stylized approach to doing terrain rather than anything realistic and should pop a lot on the tabletop. At this point we're bringing in Emperor's Children from Citadel into the very top parts of the panels on the side and kind of focusing on the center and then bringing that into the very cross center path here on the top. And for a final step here on the sides we're going to bring in Misfits Green from Scale 75 along the bottom half. This is kind of a pre-shading and tonal shift that we'll play on in just a little while. Now here comes the fun. We're getting out our Tamiya masking tape. I like Tamiya tape quite a bit. It's a Scale Modeler's brand of tape. And uh, it's very low tack. And it goes over airbrushing quite well. There's still a little bit of danger here, so I advise to let your airbrushing cure as long as possible. There's a little bit of time cut out of this video to allow the paint to dry and cure. But uh, I'm also not going full force on pressing the tape down either, so keep that in mind. Different tapes, different masking tapes, and different uh, adhesives will stick differently to acrylic, so always test, try things out. Uh, Tamiya tape. I can definitely say works well. Uh, I do use painter's tape later on here and I'll show you that but do keep that with a caveat that not all painter's tape is equal. The adhesives being used can damage your undercoats so there's a lot going on. You're also going to see me cut out some of the tape that I did here because I just wasn't quite happy with it. And now that I've got the sides all masked, I'm going to work on the tops. So I'm going to do the corners here, and we're actually going to mask over one part that we're going to do yellow later, but we'll get back to it. So I'm going to get out something a little non-traditional here. This is Silly Putty, just normal Silly Putty, the child's toy. And I'm going to use this, and I'm going to roll it up and put it in the corners because it's kind of a non-traditional place to mask. This is non-adhesive, it won't peel up your acrylic paint, and it just basically stays in place fairly well wherever you kind of sculpt it in. So I'm going to put this into the four edges just to kind of keep them from getting over any overspray. Meanwhile, I'm going to use some normal painter's tape 
to mask off some of the sections here. I'm being overly cautious. I just don't want any overspray. Is this necessary? No. Uh, it just takes more control. I'm just being paranoid here. This isn't necessarily my neatest paint job and isn't intended to be because I've got a lot of terrain to do and in mass it will look okay, even if a few mistakes are made. But I do want to make a nice, clean, crisp uh, masking job here for you. So you can see I'm using multiple different means of masking here. I'm using Tamiya masking tape, painter's tape, and uh, silly putty all at the same time. All right, now that we've got everything masked up, we're going to start off with some Averland Sunset. We're going to fill in everything here on the sides and the corners. We're going to do this part slightly different than the last part that we'll show you soon. And the main difference is going to be in the undercoat. You're going to notice a slight tonal shift here between these two sections, but that's okay. They're close enough. Since I've got a nice solid coat of Averlin Sunset, I'm going to get out a little bit of mahogany, do some spot shading, mostly along the bottom sections here along the side, and a couple of spots along the corners. Now that we've got that done, we'll get out our Flash Kits Yellow from Citadel and build up that yellow to an almost neon tone, building off of the Averlin Sunset along the tops of the sides as well as some spots here on the corners. We're reinforcing the yellow tone with just a little bit more Avalon Sunset before we move on to some ivory tone. Mixing that in just a spot of our flash gets yellow. We're gonna hit the tops of these side corners and we're also going to hit the corner bits just a little bit to get some highlights. And this will finalize it. <sighs> Look at that. Feels good. All right, now that we've got all of our masking removed, we're going to do the top panel with a little bit of masking. I gave myself a little bit of time to let the paint that we had just applied dry and cure, but we're going to go around the outside parts of this panel with our Tamiya masking tape, and then use a little bit of painter's tape. That'll come after one bit of internal masking here in the middle, where we use parafilm. So this is some interesting film that you can apply. It's not adhesive, it just kind of sticks using tension, and I'm going to carve this out using a knife. I have to be very careful. I actually do leave a little bit of marking here in the end, but um, it's neat enough, it looks good enough, and uh, it does the job right for this particular section. So it's a nice way to get a nice custom shape masked out. Here comes the masking tape around the sides, and then we're going to continue with our traditional workup. We're going to start off this time here, though, with Mahogany, then move up to Averland Sunset, then Flash gets yellow, and a spot of ivory at the end. So here comes the time lapse.
Ah, it feels good getting all that done. Let's get the last bit of highlighting done. We're going to use some Emperor's Children to do some edge highlighting here. It can be a little bit messy. This is definitely quick, even without the time lapse. I'm going to do some of the edges, some of the sides, some of the bottoms of the tops. And then we're also going to go in with some bright yellow green from Pro Acryl and hit the bottom areas in the same fashion here. This is to indicate that the bottom is kind of green lit comparatively to the top. Now that we have that done, I'm going to mark out these little bitty lights on each of the sides. Again, with the Pro Acryl bright yellow green, with the backing of the Scale 75 Misfits green against this, the bright yellow green is very easy to apply. So this is going back to the beginning of the video. Then one final step, we're going to mix some of that bright yellow green with some water. We're actually going to stipple it with a toothbrush and then use that same toothbrush to flick paint onto it with a piece of a paper clip. You can see me splattering it there on the sides. Now that this is all done, we hit it with a varnish, and our piece of terrain is complete. Thank you for joining me this week. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Next week, we'll have another video for you. Meanwhile, catch me on Twitch. I'm pushing for partner. I could use all of your help. And remember, keep on painting minis. Have fun. And until next time.